Hi, I'm John Ruther, owner of North Star Motorsports in Chicago. We're known as the original racing resource. At North Star, we sell performance racing and safety equipment for auto racing. As part of our process of helping to educate our customers, we've produced a series of videos. Some are product videos that talk about features of various products. Others talk about conceptually uh, different types of safety equipment. In this video, I'd like to spend some time talking about the Hans device. It's an, an, it's an acronym for Head and Neck Support. There are multiple manufacturers of Hans devices or similar products, but we carry only the original Hans device. This device was developed uh, probably in the late, mid to late 90s, but it never really became popular or mandated by sanctioning bodies until Dale Earnhardt died in February of 2001 at the Daytona 500. That was a wake-up call for everybody that ever gets into a race car. If it could happen to Dale Earnhardt, it could happen to anybody. So what we decided to do was to um, now make it mandatory for virtually every form of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing all over the world and it's highly recommended if you're going to use a car on a racetrack that might be your street car that could be a uh, in a driver's education environment or in an HPDE or different organizations call them different things but still you're driving your street car on a racetrack at high speeds the one thing that I want to talk about in addition to the products themselves is why you should have a Hans device or something similar in a driver's education environment. I always get customers that say, well, I'm not racing. I don't think I need one. Well, let me give you, the, let me give you my take on that. First of all, you're going just as fast as if you were racing. Secondly, you're probably less experienced than many licensed racers are. And thirdly, you're on the racetrack with a whole bunch of other people just like you who also aren't very experienced. The odds of having an incident are much, much higher, in my opinion. Even though we're not allowing passing in the corners and you're not doing quite as many maneuvers with your race car that you would be if you were wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, it's still a... Uh, a situation that you need to be prepared for and the only way in my opinion to protect yourself is to wear some form of head and neck restraint um, some of them are not there are two sanctioning bodies that would approve these devices to be used in racing one is the FIA which is the French uh, organization and the other is SFI which is in the US and they test all of these devices and will allow their um, certification to be attached to the devices. We use the original Hans device because it is, in my opinion, both the most effective, it's the easiest to use, the lightest weight, the least cumbersome, and go look at any Formula One race. They're not wearing other devices. All F1 drivers are wearing a Hans device. So that to me says they know something that the rest of us probably should know that they work, and they work very well. I've seen some horrific incidents in Formula One, and the driver basically unstraps and walks steps out of the car, and the car might be wadded up so there's not much left of it. These devices work. They will save your life. And it doesn't have to be a 200-mile-an-hour impact to uh, cause the kind of incident. Let me give you a, a statistic. When Dale Earnhardt died, the impact was at 35 miles an hour, and that doesn't sound like much, but when a car stops for going 35 miles an hour to zero in an instant, that's what the problem, when the problem becomes very real. And what happens is when the car stops, your neck snaps forward and then it snaps back, and when it does that, you end up with a basal skull fracture right at the base of the, of the, of the skull where it connects to the spine. And that's what causes virtually instantaneous death. With a Hans device, the way the device works is it sits on your shoulders, like so. And in this situation, you put your harnesses down the Hans device so it's attached to your body. These tethers are attached to the side of your helmet. 
And in an incident, what happens is the belts are going to stretch. So as the belt stretches, the device slides to the rear as the belt's stretching, and it tightens this tether to the post that's mounted on the side of your helmet, keeps your head absolutely upright in an incident. Let me give you a couple of other statistics. The head, the, the head and spinal column can um, be subjected to force somewhere in the 1150 uh, pounds on the base of the skull in a 35 mile an hour impact. The threshold of injury in a, an impact like that is about 900 pounds. So you're 250 pounds over that threshold of injury. So you're just flipping a coin. Am I going to walk away from this or am I going to end up being dead or being paralyzed? You don't know. With the Hans device, the tests have shown that the force of impact at a 35 mile an hour crash on your neck is reduced to 195 pounds. To me, I won't get in a car without one of these devices on, period. My life's worth too much to me to even flip that coin or play that game. Now, you, the question's going to be, okay, which model should I consider? In the Hans uh, device product line, they make two devices that are hand-laid carbon. They are exceptionally lightweight, although I will argue that lightweight is not necessarily something that is going to be, it's not like a helmet where the entire weight of the helmet is being supported by your neck muscles. In a Hans device, it's sitting on your shoulders. And furthermore, it's being belted down to your body with your shoulder harnesses. So you're not really going to feel the weight difference the same that you would with a, with a heavy helmet. So in that case, Hans makes two models of hand-laid carbon fiber. Yeah, they're beautiful and they look really cool, but they're much more expensive than the ones that are made from some of their polymers. They make two versions. This one happens to be called the Pro Ultra. This device weighs 1.5 pounds. They make another model, which I don't happen to have here. It's called the Pro Ultra Light. It weighs 1.3 pounds. So it's 100 grams lighter or two tenths of a pound lighter. Um, and this, this device um, is right around $1,000 and the other one is about $1,100. The next lightest Hans device is one called the Sport 3. This device looks very, very similar to the ones being used in Formula One in that it's got a big hole cut out in the back of it to take weight off the device. This new model, it's, it's relatively new, is made out of a brand new polymer and uses different resin technology such that this device um, only weighs 1.7 pounds and it's approximately half the price of this device. So for my money, I think this is probably the, and it's clearly our best selling Hans device because it's light in weight, it functions just as effectively as one of the upper end models and um, uh, it's, it's reasonably priced and it will do exactly the same job as the full carbon fiber piece. Uh, the material that's used in the polymer is actually uh, carbon fiber that's been ground up and, and extruded through a, um, an injected molding machine. That's how they make these. So this is called the Sport 3 model. Um, the next model in terms of weight is the original Sport model. This is called the Sport 2 model. It is 2.1 pounds. So this is almost a half a pound heavier than this device and it's only $50 cheaper than the Sport, the Sport 3. So uh, the Sport 2 model in my opinion is a great device. It is cheaper. It's also heavier. If the weight's not an issue and you're trying to be absolutely budget conscious, I get that. Uh, racing's expensive so let's try to cut costs whenever we can but don't cut costs by not wearing one. You need to wear one of these. Uh, so the Sport 2 uh, is a little heavier than the Sport 3. The last device I'd like to talk about is a, a relatively new one that they've made. It's been out for a year or so. Uh, it's called the Adjustable. And in this case, it's the heaviest of the four that I have here. It weighs 2.7 pounds. 
and in, the reason it's heavy is that being adjustable, it has a spline that connects the legs of the Hans device to the, to the piece that goes up behind your helmet. And there's a lot of metal in here that allows the angle between this piece and the piece that goes up behind your helmet to be changed. So if you're driving a formula car where you should use a device that may have a 30 to 40 degree angle to it, as opposed to a production-based car that uses a standard conventional race seat where you may want to run a 20 degree angle. Well, instead of having to buy two different Hans devices, if you, for example, have a Formula Mazda and a Spec Miata, the two cars take totally different seating positions and you can have one Hans device that will work effectively in both environments. And uh, the, only, the only downside is it's a little bit heavier than the others, but it certainly saves you having to make the expense of owning two Hans devices. The other thing I'd like to talk about is that previously helmets came um, with holes drilled in the side of them for locating the Hans mounting post. Part of the new Snell SA2015 standard is the M, what they call M6 terminal, the threads for mounting a Hans post to the side of the helmet now have to, by mandate from uh, the Snell Foundation, they have to be mounted and reinforced as part of the shell. So in that situation, mounting the Hans post, you no longer have to drill the helmet, you no longer have to put a, a nut washer up between the padding and the shell from the inside. It makes installing the post in a new helmet a snap. I do them in probably two minutes. And you literally thread the post in and adjust it properly and torque it and you're there. So it's very, very easy and it works like a dream. So that's the rundown on Hans devices, why I would use one, what's available in terms of product line from, from Hans, and in my opinion, it's the best invention for safety equipment since the seat belt. It works and it'll save your life. So if you have any questions about the products that I've talked about or the concept of a head and neck support system, uh, just give us a call here at North Star Motorsports. Our phone number is 800-356-2080, or you can shop for a Hans device on our website at northstarmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching.